good afternoon, everyone. It's good to be here again. And thank you to, uh, to Katie and to Annalise for that song. Uh, awesome reminder of great is thy faithfulness. And also to our sister, Shang Nu. Thank you for singing that beautiful song. I hear you're flying off to Brisbane to do other things. But wherever you go and fly, you got to land back here in Adelaide again, okay? Um, but thank you for sharing your favorite song and being part of our worship as we worship together. Um, it is better together as we grow together. Um, as we'll continue on with the sermon series of doing life and doing community, uh, doing community together. Um, it's good that we get to hang out last night. It was an awesome example of all our lovely ladies getting together and worshiping and um, just listening to stories and, and, and listening to Uncle Pete and I eating all the cakes at the back and drinking all the hot drinks and while making them. Um, but uh, it is a privilege that we're able to do life together, talk together, see one another, and any, any of you are missing, we're thinking of you. Uh, so, so I want to start off with um, this text once I turn this on. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 17, the sermon that I'm going to show or share with you is all about growing together. Uh, so in Philippians chapter 3, verse 17, the Bible says, Join with others in following my example, brothers, and take note of those who live accordingly to the pattern we gave you. The Apostle Paul writes, uh, in the book of Philippians 3.17, that we are to follow one another's example. Uh, I don't know if you'll like to follow my example. I'm a bit cheeky at times, and I'm sure that some of you will like for me to be serious. But in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 17, the key word that I have picked out of here is the word pattern. The question that I have for you is, what patterns are you following we all like to follow different types of patterns, right? I'm a routine type of guy. But I want to give you some examples. And some of the examples I want to give you is this. If you hang out with people that swear all day, most likely you're going to end up swearing, okay? Because you hear it so much, it becomes part of who you are. Another example I want to share with you, this is back in my generation, friends. I love watching friends, all right? And, and when Friends came on, they were pretty much the, the, the TV show that everyone followed and mimicked in terms of the slang words, what they wore, what they dressed. And also with this character, uh, who was uh, Rachel. You know, everyone copied the new hairstyles that came out. Um, and everyone, you know, the pickup lines of Joey to pick up girls, you know. And so there were this pop culture of following and copying these people. I'm not sure there's talk of a reunion of friends, of a movie or something. I'm not sure. But everyone was copying this TV show. What about laughing? The way we laugh. It's funny the way that we laugh. It's so funny, right? Some of us, we laugh by covering our mouths, maybe to cover the teeth that we have. I don't know. Some of us laugh so much that we probably end up laughing like the horse and the monkey on the picture up there. But the beauty of all that God designed us to grow together, to laugh together, to love one another. Isn't that what you want here as a community? To think of those that are going away on holidays like Tabitha. To think of those like Peter Schultz, your dear mum, with what she's going through. Where we grow together and be one accord with God together. To sing together. And if only I had a beautiful voice like yourself, sister, I'll be singing every week, but I don't. But what about those if you hang out with people that are pretty much depressed or have mental issues, if you surround yourselves with them 24-7 and not having a breather, you probably end up having and being like that and thinking like that and being depressed just like that with them. My son, if I can try and engage and connect to the little ones, my son loves Peppa Pig. And because he does not have an English accent or has no connections or bloodlines to the English people, he, he picks up on the accent. 
where he goes, uh, my son, if you're watching, I'm sorry to embarrass you, Jeremiah, but I know you're at home watching, where he goes, oh, daddy, and you'll laugh and do mimic what Peppa Pig does because our kids are so engaged that they copy and mimic the things that they watch. The first point and only point that I want to share with you, as this is just a sermonette, the point I want to share with you is this, that we need to be examples to each other. Amen, church? We come to church once a week. As, Jake, as Brother Jake shared, like we weren't forced to come here. We we'll all have busy lives, but we choose to come here. We be examples for one another. But as we walk out the church doors, as this is just the building and God does live in us, we have the power of the Holy Spirit, we are to be role models to one another. And so I want to encourage you, church, to be examples to each other, not just one day of the week, but every day of the week. I want to continue on. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 17, the key word, the second key word, and the only key word I want to share with you is the word example. The first one was, which patterns are you following? And the second one is, what examples are we giving? When Paul would travel to the city to start any church, house church, or a church building, he would begin by simply living among the people. He would do life with one another. He wouldn't just go build a church and live half an hour away or be away or just send letters and go to your church. He will kickstart the church, kickstart the ministry, and do ministry and life with one another. Paul was a living Bible reflecting the life of Jesus as the Bible tells us. There was another person that also lived among us. In John chapter 1 verse 14, the Bible tells us, So the Word became what? Human and made his home among us. Who was that person? Can anyone tell me? It was Jesus. You see, when Jesus came, he didn't just separate himself from people. He came to be with us. I want to share with you, I'm trying to lose weight. My, I have high blood pressure. Maybe you all give me high blood pressure. I don't know. But when I go to the doctors and have my checkups, they go, ooh, your blood is very high. I go, I go, yes, have you been to my church? My blood pressure jumps up. So I have to exercise because I'm pre-diabetic. Maybe it's all the spicy food I eat with the Burmese family. I don't know. But because I'm pre-diabetic, I have to exercise. And I have lost some weight, some weight. And I do need to watch what I eat. So as I walk up Anstey's Hill, Annie Tad at the back loves Anstey's Hill. There was one time she rolled down Anstey's Hill and hasn't been back to Anstey's Hill from a broken foot. And so as, we, as I walk through Anstey's Hill, I want to share with you the culture that they have there with their signs. When you walk up the, the trail, sorry for my photo, it says, keep left. If you're riding your bike, it says, ride slow. But I love this one. When you walk, say, g'day. Say, what's up, g'day? How are you? Good morning. And as we're walking with people we don't even know, I'm just saying, hello, good morning. And they're replying back. I love that. Sometimes you'll walk, say, good morning, and they don't say anything to you. Maybe because we look like scary people. But I want to share with you that I walk not by myself, but with people. I walk with Pastor Stephen Buse, I walk with Pastor Roland, and I walk with Tino sometimes, where we do life with one another because it's better if we are together because we grow together. Isn't that what God intended us to do? That we spend time together? Isn't that why we come together as a church? Not for me to preach at you, but to share the love of God and to encourage you to do life with one another. After church, we have soup and buns, but today there is no soup and buns because I think you're sick of my soup. Maybe I poisoned some of you, but we're having toasties today because we want to fellowship together. We have potluck next week. If you're only going to come this week, I encourage you, come next week so we can get to know you because food brings people together. 
Are you getting what I'm saying, church? So walk with people, spend time with people, pray with one another, because it's not good for you to isolate yourself and being all by yourself when we can't help you, but when we're together, walking together, worshiping together, loving together, praying together for one another, we will grow spiritually together. Amen, church? I saw someone yawn just run about now, so I need to finish up the seminar. I'm only joking. I've been married for 13 years. Yes, that's me in there. I was not a model, but I just had hair like that. And as my wife and I got married in Sydney in front of the, uh, the, the opera house there and took a photo, even though we've been married for 13 years and I'm not picking on my wife, I've learned many lessons on picking on my wife, and I know she's watching, but I love you very so, my dear wife, Puna. Been married for 13 years, and as I share with other couples that I do marriage counseling with or pre-marriage counseling with, I always share with them, when you date, you are courting your partner. You want to know everything about them, the size of what they wear, the, the, the favorite colors, their favorite food, the songs that they like to listen to, the cars that they like to drive, the hair that they like to grow long with, Liam. But when you get married, it seems like all those things are out the window anymore because you have that person. After 13 years, sometimes, or whatever how many years you've been married for, sometimes marriage tends to get a little bit stale because you are not courting your partner anymore, husbands and wives. And so after 13 years, my wife noticed that I haven't been paying her much attention. And so we do this Bible reading on this app called YouVersion. And my wife and I, we picked a reading called, Honey, We Need to Talk. And when you hear something like that, you go, ooh, something, you're in trouble. But as we're reading this reading, it taught us something. It taught us something where we needed to spend at least half an hour together knowing one another. Because every time I come home, I am so talked out, I don't want to talk to anyone in my household because I'm always talking to you or when I come and visit you. And so when I go home, I don't want to talk because I'm so tired. I'm tired. Da, 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 da. And so I want to come home and as husbands, I'm a bad listener because I will listen to, to my wife going, da, 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 and then I hear my son, Peppa Pig, da, 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 right? And as I'm listening to all of this, I'm sitting there, I'm going, and I'm spaced out, right? And then my wife goes, men, listen to this. Did you hear what I just tell you? And I'll be like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, did you, what did I just say? Uh, that you love me? And I'll be, Psh, <laughs> So from this reading, because in our marriage, we want to grow together. We, did, we thought, after reading this reading, honey, we need to talk on new version. We learned something to, to develop and grow our marriage together. And I want to encourage you all, where when I come home, or it doesn't matter if I come home, even if I'm at home, doesn't matter, we will spend half an hour, at least half an hour, where we just get to know one another again. Because the devil is working hard to break marriages today. But God intended for marriages to be together so that we can grow together so no more tv no more phones so any of you people are trying to call me are not picking up because i'm spending time with my wife and where we're getting to know one another i want to know what my wife likes the colors that she likes the food that she likes the tv shows that she wants to watch the movies or what she wants me to spend with my credit card that i'll use on her credit card and so for order for my marriage to work and for us to grow together is that we need to spend more time together. And after 13 years of marriage, I just want to be like Rob and Susanna. I want to be like Sandy and eh, Brett sometimes. I want to be like <laughs> Peter and Mal, those that have been married for 40 plus years or 30 plus years, okay? And for some of you, it's almost 80 years, all right? I want to learn how you succeed. Marriage is not easy, it's hard, but it takes time when you stop all the distractions and spend time together. Am I making myself clear with that point? Spend time together in the world that we live in. 
because we're very busy. So who are your role models, church? Who do you look to for guidance? Who do you rely on? Is it yourself when you have no one else? I wanna encourage you to find a mentor. Be a mentor to our young kids. Peppa Pig is not a good mentor to my son. See, my son needs real people to be a mentor too, so he can grow spiritually. So I want to share with you something as I wrap up. The question I have for you is this. Who has been the greatest positive influence in your life? Maybe it's this man over here with flares, <laughs> Peter Wagner. Maybe for Morgan, your greatest mentors are your parents that do f- like faces over there. Maybe for the young people, your greatest mentor is Tino. I don't know. Maybe it's the young people growing together, doing life together. Maybe it's women's ministry night. Maybe it's getting all the kids on stage singing. Maybe it's communion service. Maybe it's old friends doing life together. But for me, the reason why I'm in church is not so much the sermon. It's not the the Daniel Revelation seminars that I had to sit through. It's not the Sabbath school class. It's all those things, but the most important of all is people. It's you and I as we journey together. I don't remember all the sermons that have been preached for the last 38 years of my life. I don't remember all the Sabbath school lessons in the last 38 years of my life. But what I do remember are key people in my life, in your life, that had an influence on your life. That has been the most important thing in your life and why you're here, maybe. But for me, the reason why I'm still in church is because I had great mentors in the churches that I grew up in that invested their time in me, mentored me, loved on me to be the leader that I am today. Because if we're not journeying together, working together, loving together, walking together, praying together, reading the Bible together, then who do we have? Together is better with God. So I want to get that point to you. If we look at this photo, I have a photo of Duala and Ropian, okay? These two, you never thought they'll ever be friends the last couple years until this year. A lot of people have been telling me these two are like a married couple. They're glued together. (laughs) You cannot separate these two. Okay? I want to share this with you. Last night after women's ministry, they were playing basketball outside. Okay? Not only that, they finished till 2.45 in the morning because they were doing life together. Isn't that what Jesus did with us? He spent time with us together. And even though a lot of us want to be home sleeping and not be crazy young people like them playing basketball all hours of the morning, but they are doing life together and they're probably doing the same thing on that photo at the back playing games right now, but they are together. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Paul writes, Follow my example as I, have, as I follow example of Christ. So be an example to one another. As we break up for Fort Washing at the back, I want to encourage you to teach your kids. Make it a culture. Maybe as a family, come and, and wash feet together or find someone that's on their own. Whatever your personality is, be an example. Jesus is our example. When God created the universe, he did not create us to be loners. He created us to be together. And with the sermon series as we wrap it up, We are to grow together. And if we are not together, then I'm sorry, we are not going to grow together. So we need to be together. And I encourage you to be connected so that we can grow with one another, with God being on our side. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you and love you and ask that we continue to grow together. We thank you, Father God, for the sacrifices and the blessings that you have made for us. Thank you for the cross that you died on for our sins. Thank you for teaching us to humble ourselves as we get on our knees and pray, and not only that, wash the feet of other people. For some, it's probably not a thing, and for others, it is a thing. But I pray, Father God, that we can teach our families, teach our kids, that foot washing and community service is for all people. It's for everyone and anyone. 
Thank you for showing an example. Thank you for a reminder of us to grow together because we are better together. We thank you, Father God. Thank you for our church family as we can grow together and worship you. It has been a blessed day and this day is not over yet. In your name as we pray, amen. So church, if you want to get your families and do foot washing, even if you want to go by yourself, you're looking for a partner. If you don't want to do foot washing at all, that's all right. We do not force anyone. But you are most welcome to stay here. Uh, I believe that uh, Auntie Mal has some things that she'll show up here. But I just want to use this time to reflect on what Jesus has done for us while we're at the back doing foot washing as we come back. Like to uh, yeah, welcome back everyone from foot washing. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the experience, and also those of you that remain behind as you fellowship together and talking and um, and sharing. Um, as we get into communion service, the second part of the program, I'd like to call upon um, the deaconesses to come to uh, take the cloths off the the emblems, please, before we start. During this time, um, communion service is for everyone, all Christian believers. So I'd like to invite you to come now um, as you collect a glass and also a bread. <laughs> yeah. So come on up and collect. Hemi sacrament a atangle atenglohi atuihi laula teuro. ไปอินไปอินไปลงก็รู้อินไปลงก็รู้ลงละรู้ลงละเวกรู้ลงก็รู้ลงก็ลงละเวกรู้อืมอัดทางเนียนข้างหลังห้ารู้อ๋อไก
I just want to share something with you, church. In a book called The Seven Day Adventists Believe, page 231, it says, The Lord's Supper is a participation in the emblems, or it symbolizes the body and blood of Jesus as an expression of faith in Him. The communion service is open to all believing Christians. When I was a young kid growing up in a conservative church, in a Samoan church, we used to have this idea that you had to be a baptized member to, to take part in communion. But you see here in the statement that communion service is open to all believing Christians, baptized or not baptized. If you love Jesus and believe in Jesus, you're most welcome to come to the table. Ale voinia hianin helaya sacrament kan e tur hi um enge seven day adventist belief pegs an hi som thumpa kha na chuani en tinge aziati chuani kan rin na bua chuani i iswaring tu zong zong te tan a e thei ve kan ni e chuang chuani baptisma chang kher lo pon iswa kan ring an i chuani a e thei ve ka chuang zo in sa va in i he sacrament hi min kil pui tu rin kan som cheu ni hati ni So with that, you are all welcome because Jesus came to die not just for the baptized, but for everyone, and that includes all of us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 26, the Bible says, it, is, it talks about the order of the communion service of the Last Supper. The Bible says, For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Amen. อเลอัมโครินธ์ทอนกัดบุงสอมปะขะจังสอมนิปะทุมะจังกันฉิอาร์จวานินกะทูฮิลซอนเจวคาปะเทียนเนนะตากะหมวซินคะเตียลลป
please bless uh, this uh, uh, wine and bread for uh, mentally, physically, and spiritually. The Bible says, Know that the things you will be blessed if you follow them. Today we are doing this in, remember in remembrance of you. Please forgive us our all sins. Teach us how to love one another as you love us through your blood and your precious, your precious blood and your holy body. Thank you so much for everything what you've done to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's partake, church, of a silent prayer. I'd like to um, yeah, thank you for everyone for participating in communion service. I'd like to invite you to come back and return your cups. And during this time, as you return your cups, I'll call on the deaconesses to come when you know it's ready. To put oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Church, before we pray, I'd like to call on Morgan Simon, please, to come to the front. She does not know this. It's just the way that life is sometimes for me. Morgan, thank you for not being scary. If you can stand next to me, I want to pray. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you and love you once again. We thank you for your awesome love that you have for all of us. And Morgan's probably thinking, why am I standing next to the pastor in front of everyone? where it's been live streamed is because you have blessed this young lady with 13 years of a birthday so we say happy birthday to morgan thank you father god for blessing her with 13 years of birthdays and many more birthdays to come and may you be with her as she continues to celebrate and grow with her friends as they celebrate her birthday we pray also father god a reminder of who you are for for you, Father God, for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. And as you've gone home to prepare a place for us, you have given us the power of your Holy Spirit that lives in us to be more like you. So, Father God, be with us as we continue to grow together. And may, us, may we remember about our bonfire tonight as we do life together and get to know one another. Because God did not design for us to be on our own, to be lonely, but designed for us to be together with you being part of everything that we do as we honor and praise and worship you and also to think of those that are not here like Tracy and Puna and Jeremiah and Kimmy who's looking after their baby with, uh, with Neymar and also um, with Tabitha that's going overseas we thank you for those that I'll probably miss like Gordon Brown he's not here with us and others that are not here. So we ask, Father God, to bless our church, your church. May you continue to be the head of this church. In your name as we pray, amen. Thank you, church. God bless you. Have a good one if we not see you tonight at the bonfire at the Wegner's house. Thank you to Jake and the team. See you next week as we've got Darren Pratt taking the service for us. God bless.